This is Scooty McBooty, an all-electric mobility scooter power unit upgrade for power wheels to haul my booty. The goals here to build this are to be all-electric and with a high power to dollar ratio. So we have to cut some corners and overdrive some things, but it's all within reason. The theoretical power output of this build is almost 1.4 horsepower. Specs for the upgraded motor and gearbox state it can handle 24 volts, but looking at the wire gauge, I'm gonna bump that up to 40 volts using two cordless drill batteries. And reasonably, I can assume this won't melt anything because if we look at this motor's original purpose, it's to haul up to 400 pounds up a steep ramp at its traditional 24 volts. Without quantifying that amount of current near install torque, I'm just gonna guesstimate 40 volts is perfectly fine to push this through the motor. So that gives us a top speed at about seven to eight miles per hour, and that's hauling 200 pounds, and that's a breezy 10 miles per hour downhill. However, the stock steering of this car is a bit loose for that speed, so I'm gonna leave 10 miles an hour off the spec sheet. But what's more impressive is the torque at the low end speed. Terrain like high pile carpet, jagged rocks, steep inclines, and even mountainous hills are no match for the basically 1,000 plus watts, that's theoretical, of power driving these not for highway use tires. Oh, and it can do this too. <laughs> All right, I can't do it. <laughs> First, you'll need a very cheap power wheels for a body. This was $11 at the thrift store. It did not include a steering wheel, so I have a wood one for now. It's not actually a power wheels, but something internal through Walmart's import channels. Anyway, it's smaller than a power wheels, but still suitable. Next on the list is a new power unit. I want to stay electric and brush motors make electronics simple, so we'll stay there. That means options are either cordless drill motors or mobility scooter parts. And mobility scooter parts are the easy answer as the wheels, axle, gearbox, and the motor are typically all in one unit. Mobility scooter parts are common on the second and third hand market, but do not buy these parts direct as the markup from private insurance is just insane. So what I have here is called a transaxle and wheels were included. I was really lucky and able to match the wheel span and wheel size within an inch to this car. And options like these transaxles are plentiful in this market and this unit was pretty cheap and I think the reason for that is the hub is bent but it's not really noticeable when you drive it. I did do a bench test with a drill battery to see if this idea was viable and yeah it is obviously. Sometimes these transaxle assemblies will come with the electric brake and this brake is special. On these units, they are automatic brakes designed for fail-safe conditions, which is to stop the scooter and lock the wheels in the event of power loss. It's a ceramic disc coupled with the motor shaft, and that disc is sandwiched between a solenoid-driven plate. Braking is automatic or always on unless you apply power to the solenoid. That means whenever you are in motion, you always need about nine watts of power to keep the brakes off. And that's no fun. So right now I'm not using the brakes. This mechanical lever lets you disengage the brakes for a all gas, no brake setup, which is what we're doing here. So moving on to the hard part now. The next thing you need to do is find some metal. I'm under some budget constraints, so buying tube stock is a no, but I did find this coat rack in the dumpster uh, like a year ago, which happens to be 18 gauge square tubing. It's free metal, but we have to do a bit of cutting and sandblasting before welding up a frame. And this is the frame welded together. I didn't film any of the welding, grinding, sandblasting, or cutting because I care about this camera. With the frame now painted, we can mount the motor and drop everything in. I'm using some wood chunks to fill in some spaces and attach the chassis to the body. These engineered wood chunks also spread out the clamping force of the bolts to the body and the chassis. I made some 3D printed feet to interface with the plastic body at the ends of the rear metal posts. This just spreads the weight out and prevents the metal from poking its way through. These are also to transfer the force to the tires at steep inclines or when high acceleration forces are present. 
There's also a weirdly shaped section at the rear of the body that I wanted to tie the metal chassis into. So I did have to make another weird part out of wood to connect these two and a long bolt fastens all this stack together. So three attachment points and the chassis is attached to the body. Now onto the electrical part. We do need to figure out the power source, but I'm cutting corners again at this step. The power supply will be two cordless drill batteries. All the hard part of battery pack management and charging is already done here, and you're gonna need these anyway to complete this build, so these are a technical freebie in our bill of materials. Two batteries in series give us slightly over 40 volts at full charge. Here's a wiring diagram of the power unit side. Feel free to pause the video to take it all in. The power unit is comprised of two 18 volt Bosch battery packs, and this XY1260 DC motor controller. It's just a speed controller that says it's rated up to 50 amps or 3000 watts, which is pretty crazy. And so far it's running just fine. This potentiometer ramps up the controlled voltage, which increases the motor speed. Fast is good, but we also need reverse for those seven point turns. I want to use this toy car's original forward and reverse switch. However, when checking the pinout, the continuity meter was showing some significant resistance in the switch contacts. I suspect this car was left out in the rain and that found its way into the switch. So some industrial contact cleaner sorted this issue out. Now we have forward and reverse and how to wire that looks like this. Just a safety note, this setup cannot protect the motor from abuse. If you throw this switch in reverse while at full forward speed, you will stress the motor's coils with a big sudden polarity change. I'm pretty sure the batteries have internal circuitry protecting them from current overload like this, but this motor will not survive such repeated abuse. Sadly, I cannot show you a reverse 180 maneuver doing a forward to reverse sudden switch. Experienced operators only switch directions when the car is at a complete stop, so I'm sorry. I did add a master on-off switch as well as a full series battery voltage readout, and I wanted to store the batteries out of sight, but accessibility was key in the event of having to recharge the batteries, so they just kind of sit out in the open. I did make it so any power source could be dropped in by accessing the main connections at this barrier strip. And I don't need to secure them either because the sticker is here and we just made some modifications, so perfect. The next item to address is this other sticker, which I think is because we're missing the features that make this car street legal. So I've added some indicator lights for left turn signal and right turn signal. These just run off in Arduino Uno and these Adafruit NeoPixel Drool PCBs, which are just seven addressable RGBW LEDs on each board. I've also added a safety car mode. In case the Formula One moderators decide they want a faster safety car, they could just use this. And the car also has built-in headlamps, so those were reconnected. They're just LEDs. Unfortunately, the car only came with one side view mirror, so I did upgrade it by removing the mirror sticker and putting an actual mirror in its place. And lastly, we need an audible signal to tell other motorists we are present so we can be roadworthy. But horns are expensive, so all I had was this buzzer. And I also ran out of switches on the dashboard, so the gas pedal is now the horn. And I think we're street legal now. Total out-of-pocket costs were the following. The mobility scooter transaxle is the key to all of this coming together. Well, I guess that's the welded frame is literally coming it together. But get the transaxle first and plan your build around that. Uh, the transaxle itself weighs about 19 pounds. The welded frame adds another 3 to 4 pounds. And the car is easily 10 pounds with its half metal chassis, body, and other plastic bits. So all together, we're at around 40 to 50 pounds for this car but it is easy to pick up and put in a car so you can, in theory, drive from where you park your car, from the parking deck to where you work. It's a great daily driver and it handles pretty okay. If I were to do it all again, I probably just weld an all metal chassis because one thing for sure is now that I've discovered it can do wheelies, which are like the most fun part about this, there's definitely a lot of stress at the front end. And I know the original poorly welded metal frame is gonna break somewhere in the front soon. 
because the original weight limit for this car was, I think, 55 pounds as listed by the original Walmart listing. So full metal chassis would upgrade. And then I think next would be probably pneumatic tires, just air filled tires for the front, add another level of suspension. So anyway, thank you for watching everyone. This was a really fun distraction build and I'll be back doing some arcade stuff uh, shortly. Bye.